Hello and welcome to another US Cutter video. Today we're going to be looking at the iColor 350 sublimation printer from UniNet. Just like all other sublimation printers, you can use this to create sublimation transfers for you to press onto white or light colored 100% polyester fabrics or white or stainless steel hard surface items that have a clear polyurethane coating. Other printers will use gel or water-based ink to transfer the sublimation pigment to the paper, but the iColor 350 uses a dry toner powder as means to transfer the sublimation pigment. Some nice bonuses of using toner is that you don't have to worry about smearing anything like you would with ink once you've printed onto a transfer. You're also not required to immediately press the transfer like you are with normal sublimation ink. And rather than having to use a special sublimation paper, you can print on any paper you want when you're using sublimation toner. All right, let's go ahead and start by opening up the box and seeing what comes included with the iColor 350 when you purchase it brand new. With everything laid out on the table, we can take a look at what we have. First and foremost, the printer comes with a one-year warranty supported by UniNet right out of the box. It comes with a USB cable, a Cat5 networking cable, a toner cleaning cloth. Next, we have the driver and instruction manual located inside this box on this little USB stick. Then we have the power cord, which is your standard three prong, and works with normal wall outlets. The toner cartridges will be located and sealed inside the printer, so make sure you open up the printer and remove everything before powering it on. Let's go ahead and take a look on the outside of the printer and see what everything is. On the front top of the printer, you have the digital display, as well as the buttons that allow you to navigate the menu. All the way on the right side of it, you have the power button that is used to turn the printer on and off. When you turn it around a little bit, you can see the button on the side that allows you to press and bring down the front of the printer to access the paper feed as well as access the fuser. Let me spin it around and give you a nice look inside. You've got these blue switches right here on the fuser that allow you to switch it between normal paper or if you're going to be doing something thicker like an envelope. Why you would want to use an envelope, I don't know, but if that's what you want to, go for it. On the door we brought down, you can see that it has the paper feeding mechanism attached to it. And we can just shut that. And below that, you have the paper loading tray. When loading your paper in the tray, you want to make sure to press it all the way down, allowing your paper to lay flat. It will automatically pop up when pushed back into the printer, ensuring that the paper feeds inside of it correctly. Then finally, on the back, we have a spot to plug in your power cord on the right, and then hidden on the left is the ethernet port, as well as all your USB connections that you might need. The printer also has the ability to connect to your network using Wi-Fi, which is what I'm going to use in this example here today. So again, before I'm gonna plug it in and power on the printer, I want to make sure that I take off all the protective packaging, I want that all removed. You make sure that you open it up and make sure that there's nothing on the toner cartridges. All that protective packaging is gone too. I also suggest giving each of your toner cartridges a good shake before turning the printer on. This will loosen up the toner if it's been packed down from shipping. If you plan on connecting to the printer using just a USB connection, you can power on the printer, but do not connect it to your computer just yet using that USB cable. You wanna wait until you're instructed to do so in the installation of the driver first. Since I'm going to be connecting using a Wi-Fi option, I'm going to turn the printer on and connect it to my network. Next, we need to install the printer to our computer and then also install the ICC profile. To install the included ICC profile in Windows 10, you just double click it and it will instantly self-install. If you would like to verify this or prefer to manually place the ICC profile in the folder, you can go to your Windows install folder. Then you want to open up the System32 folder, scroll down and open up the Spool folder. After that, you want to open the Drivers folder, and then we want to open up the Color folder. Here you can verify that the profile installed when you clicked it, or you can just drag and drop the ICC profile into this folder to install it or access it later. Next, let's install the printer. To do this, we're just going to go to the iColor driver folder 
and double click the install program. The program will pop up and have several installation options and readmes, but I'm just going to go for the quick start here. After reading and agreeing to two user agreements, we then get the main options. We can select that USB connection if you're using that, network connection, or wireless connection. Again, if you're going to connect your printer via a USB cable, select the top option. If you have already connected your printer to your network using a wired or Wi-Fi connection, then select network connection. If you want to do a direct wireless connection, then you can use the third option. I'm going to install Networked, so let's select that option and move to the next pop-up window asking me if I want to manually configure the printer network or let the program handle it automatically. I'm going to take the easy street and select automatically. This will scan the network for the printer, allowing you to select a printer that you want to install. It found the same printer twice, but for sanity's sake, I'm picking the top option with the IP address. Next, we have the features window. We want all the features, right? With all of them checked, we hit the next button and we're done. Just close out the installer program after that and you're ready to print. If you're going to print something cartoony or vector-like, like this, then you don't really need the ICC profile. If you're going to do something photorealistic, then it is recommended that you use the ICC profile that's been included. If you're really going to be printing a lot of vector design stuff and it's fun and doesn't require 100% color accuracy, then you can print from any program you like. But if you want to use an ICC profile, you need to select a program that will allow you to print like that. And a program like that that everyone's going to know is either going to be Photoshop or Illustrator. These programs will allow you to pick the other ICC profiles and use those with your printer rather than the default ICC profile that it comes with. What if we're doing 100% polyester? Just want to do it at 380 degrees for about 40 seconds to get that transfer over. If you're doing a hard surface, it's pretty much going to be the same thing too. Because it does use toner to transfer the pigment, there will be a little left over that you will need to remove using fingernail polish remover. Pour a little bit on a towel and then wipe it off and it comes right off of a cooled hard surface. Or, if you just don't want to do that at all, just use some of the Uninet Subliclean paper. You just want to lay the Subliclean down over your hard surface and then lay the transfer right over the top of it. I'm doing a metallic surface here, so I'm doing 380 degrees for 40 seconds. And when I peel it, I'm going to wait till it's cold, but when I peel it off, the Subliclean melts and sticks to the paper and it prevents any of the toner from actually sticking, but does allow the sublimation to transfer through the Subliclear over to my substrate and I don't have to worry about cleaning anything. So if you're going to be doing hard surfaces, this is a must have. But if you're going to be doing polyester fabrics, that's not needed, only for hard surfaces. Seems pretty easy, right? Now, you can go and use the temperature guide from my sublimation video that we've done before, and it's got some temps and guides there that are fine. Honestly, you can stick 380 degrees 40 seconds on pretty much everything, and you'll be fine. Now, I've got a few tips and tricks that are going to help you out when using this printer. I also did some testing, maybe if you wanted to print and then use it for cotton. I was able to get it to work with some of the Caesar Easy Subly paper. I press the Caesar Easy Subly at 380 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 seconds successfully. The downside to that is the white does lose a little bit of its opaqueness because of it, especially if you go over that 40 seconds, but I was able to get a successful transfer and after I washed it last night it held up just fine. I even cut and pressed one of the older images that I did for my last print and cut video and it turned out pretty good, so I'm really impressed with how it worked so far. I also tested some of the other papers that US Cutter offers for sublimation on cotton, like the Forever Sublite and the Subliflex 202, but unfortunately, they did not work with sublimation toner. Sublimation toner, however, does work great with white glitter heat transfer vinyl, however. 
Uh, I cut the heat transfer vinyl and pressed it to the shirt. Uh, and then I pressed the sublimation transfer over the top of it. I pressed it at 380 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 seconds and it gave me a great transfer. And if you are printing some solid heavy prints and you find your images start to look like this, give your cartridges a good shake and then put them back in and print it and everything should turn out just fine. And finally, the toner cartridges that the iColor 350 use are single use cartridges that can be replaced with ease. Once you've used the cartridge, just swap it out for a fresh one and you're done. If you have any further questions, you can reach out to our sales team at sales at uscutter.com and our support agents can be reached at support at uscutter.com. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and have yourself a wonderful day.